Hi, Lightwalker here to narrate a hike I just took the other day. It's from Falls Village to Salisbury, Connecticut, distance of 9.6 miles, just under 1,500 feet of elevation. Apologize for not videotaping the first half mile. It's pretty much a road walk on Warren Turnpike past the Housatonic Valley Regional School. I highly recommend getting this book or renting it, taking it out your local library. It's a great summary of how to get on these trails. There's a temperature at the start of the hike, a lovely 70 degrees at a uh, com somewhat comfortable 55% humidity. So at this point I started taking pictures about a mile into the hike. Apologize for not taking them sooner. You can see a welcome sign. Very beautiful soft pine uh, covered trail. Pine needle covered trail. Uh, on both sides you can see my favorite floral feature, the ferns. The first three miles of this hike is very gentle. Along the Housatonic River, you'll see there to the light, to the left, gently flowing river, just beautifully shaded walk with benches along the entire part of the trail and some educational material right along the trail as well with more benches. Looking up, you could see where the hemlocks have just been getting torn apart by that insect from Japan. My guess is those trees will be cut down within the next five years. And some really nice new, it looks like pine benches built by the whoever maintains this part of the trail. Kudos. Very nice, easy walking part of the trail. If you're not in elevation, this first three miles is for you. Up to the falls and back. It's a beautiful six, five point five, maybe six mile hike. You can see where they did do some kayaking on the left. No kayaks, but you can see the poles. At this point, we've got a mile and a half into the hike, and we're going to actually be taking some side roads around the river for about the next half mile, maybe mile, maybe mile and a half up to the falls. Once again, well maintained trails. Here's some fresh cut wood right there. Kudos off to the Trail Maintenance Committee, the Appalachian Mountain Club, I believe. And a guest brochure before you get to the main road near the power lines, power plant. Speaking of the power plant, there it is on the left, and you're going to get on a, a main road going along it, and you'll pass it on your left along with a huge rock wall to the right. This wall must be a good 20 feet tall. I'm not sure how old it is, but it's very well maintained. And down there to the left, you can see the main utility building for the power plant. And just past that is a bridge you take a left on, and I've got a picture of the bridge. They just rebuilt it last year. It's beautiful. I hear it was shut down for a while to cars for several years while it was being rebuilt. And you can see the view looking south to the power plant. And then looking north up toward the falls, which I don't believe you can see yet. Nope, just rocks. And there's a nice little uh, flume that I'm guessing people can wade in or slide down on a hot sunny day. Um, could be kind of dangerous, so watch yourself. This is what you do not want <laughs> to slide down on a hot summer day. The uh, hiking book says you you can stand underneath the bottom of the falls, but wear protective footwear. Before my feet and this is near the top of the falls. You don't realize how tall these falls are until you get up there. I've got a video of that coming right up. my one and only cameo appearance on this video and that's the view from the top of the falls looking north At this point we've gone 2.7 miles and we're about to embark on a two mile gradual upset 
ascent to the top of Mount Prospect, which is just under 1,500 feet. The book describes this as a 900-foot ascent, but if you're in decent shape, it should be no problem. Nothing as hard as as, as was done uh, going up Mount Scatico and Mount Algo. See, part of it's just beautiful through trails. Here it's starting to get steep after going across this short, small brook. I'm not sure what these ferns are called, but from here on out, they're all around the trail. Just beautiful. I believe these are the ones that survive through the winter. And at this point, before the steep part really starts, we're 3.7 miles into the trail. If you're not into climbing steep mountains, this is a time to turn around and count your blessings. But you can see it's all uphill for about the next half mile. There's another rock wall near the summit of Mount Prospect. Maybe about a quarter mile from the summit. I've seen this in other people's hiking videos and I was wondering where it was from. Now I know. Gives you a rest every now and then the trail. It's not a, it's not a continual ascent, so there's plenty of room for breaks. Figures of woodpeckers would stop pecking shortly after I started filming that. Call that dueling woodpeckers. Here's a view from the top of Mount Prospect. Uh, when you get to the trailhead, that's looking east. I'm not sure what town it is. Um, I'm guessing Falls Village. I could be mistaken. Uh, probably Canaan, I'm guessing. And there's a close-up. And you can see a nice little uh, ledge where you could, a half dozen people can sit comfortably and enjoy their lunch. And that's exactly where I had my lunch. Very nice and bree cool and breezy up there and a perfect place to uh, take a break. At this point, we are 4.6 miles into our hike, two hours in. At this point, we come across Spring Shelter. I believe the book describes this as a steep half-mile descent to the shelter and then back up. So I wasn't about to take it. Actually, it's called, I believe, Lime Limestone Shelter. Just a half mile, but it's steep. Someone left a note that they lost something. But I went straight, and after a little descent, you get to this beautiful farm area, which is no longer farmed. It looks like just all grassland. And I've got two pictures of that beautiful valley coming up. Here's a first one. Straight ahead, here's one looking to the right, pretty much straight east. And I think I have a third one coming up heading north, and our trail just goes right along the um, the northern side, yes, of that massive farm area. This point, this is probably the largest rock outcropping in the whole hike. Not really many of them seen at all. We did this uh, feature called the Giant's Thumb, which you can Google or you can read about in David Emblage's Exploring the Appalachian Trail Book. At this point, the trail goes gently uphill and downhill. It's mostly downhill from here on until you get to uh, what's called Barak Matif. I believe that's an overlook right there. Looking uh, east-northeast. Kind of hard to make out what you're looking because it's not much of an overlook. <clears throat> That's looking more north, I'm guessing, toward um, Lion's Head. And the trail gradually descends all the way to U.S. Route 44. It's about a mile and a half descent to get to Route 44 and about another half mile to get to Route 41. There's a nice ladder that somebody on the maintenance committee built for us. Just had to turn around and take a picture of that. Thank you very much. Here's a serious blowdown, which only took about 30 seconds to hike around, uh, but really had to uh, climb over this huge trunk even after hiking around it. I'm going to report that to the committee. Uh, that's the only major blowdown I've seen along this whole section, so kudos to them. And from here on, the trail is very uh, enjoyable. And that's looking back at the ridge that we just came down as we end at Route 44. 
Go down Route 44 a little ways, tenth of a mile, you'll see that the AT takes a right here on Cobb, I believe it's Cobble Road, as you enter the town line into the town of Salisbury, Connecticut. And if you go on Cobble Road for a while, you'll see St. Mary's Cemetery to your left. I believe the book describes a spigot there to get water. I could be mistaken. And the AT continues about a half mile down that road to your right. This is this section's no more than a half mile. It starts in this open field and finishes in this beautiful pine forest. This point, we're near the end, and you can see a sign someone made. This is a former 1,500-foot mark. I think now it's just a a few miles short of 1,500 feet, so the trail's gotten longer. And there's a parking lot at the end, room for at least a half dozen cars, maybe more if you pack them in. Hope you enjoyed this, coming along this adventure with me. There's a temperature at the end. It's, it's still a beautiful, cool 74 degrees for late June. If you like it, thumbs up. If not, thumbs down or change a channel. Please subscribe and refer a friend if you enjoy camping in Connecticut and along the Appalachian Trail as well. Here's a summary of the hike. You can pause if you like. And there's a view showing you what the actual trail looked like from start to finish. Lightwalker signing out. Have a great day. Uh, before I go, there's a close-up of the end. It just shows you where Cobble Road is and where the field is where you get back all the way to Connecticut 41. Lightwalker signing out. Have a great day, and thanks a lot for coming along this adventure with me.